In this episode, we look at some really cool boats. Then we find out what drogues are used for and when to use them. Then the chain arrives. We get ourselves all chained up on the chain gang. Right, this is Mo, and his job today is denailing some wood. Now, I just come along, and I just seen this pile over here, and I thought, I thought that was the to-do pile, but no, that's the done pile. The to-do pile is over here. <laughs> Happy denailing! Thank you. It's nice when you're away from home to get post. Even nicer when a friend, Uncle Bob, I've got to thank for this, uh, sends me loads of parts that I need from England. That's what we call chain in the rain. <laughs> so I was trying to imagine just how big a pile it was. You'll have seen all the work I've been doing with the new windlass. Well, this was the next part of the plan. The chain, brand new chain, 75 meters, arrived on a rainy day. That's the way of it in New Zealand at the moment. We have two types of weather. It's either raining or it's not raining. Um, and it started out as an unraining day. It was beautiful and sunny and it's been forecast as such the next few days and I've got 70 meters of chain just delivered I prepped up everything ready for it this morning and just as the guy arrived the heavens opened up so I think it's time to just um, leave this in a big pile here and go and have a cup of coffee okay so I've got the dinghy tied fore and aft all I gotta do now is get that lump of chain in it Oh, that's stage one of the plan done. <laughs> Good job I got this dinghy, that would never have gone in tiny shaddy. My cunning plan was to first put all the chain in the dinghy, bring the dinghy over to the front of the boat, and winch it on board. That's heavy. Bit of a monumental day, really. Uh, new chain arrives to shaddy to feed her new uh, windlass. I gotta get all that <laughs> chain uh, into the locker now. But I have an electric winch. I can do it. There's a hell of a noise coming from the town. They're cutting the grass with big mowing machines. This is all new to me, so I'm taking it bit by bit. I've loosened that up, I've taken the uh, clutch off, the brake, if you will. I'm gonna thread the chain. It's gonna go over the, uh, over that, and then down the hole. Uh, and then I'm gonna fix it in the boat. I'm super nervous about this because uh, I've been going on about this uh, job for a while now with friends, other people here in the boatyard. Uh, so that my, you know, Barry's, Barry's windlass is, is almost famous and everybody's watching it with interest, waiting for me to screw up. No, they're really nice, really, I'm joking, but you know what I mean? And this is like, everybody's passing, oh, you did it, you know, you're getting the chain on now. So I'm kind of nervous about this. I'm gonna turn on the power now, go up and see if it all works. The culmination of what has been quite a long drawn out job. But here we go. Yeah, let's do this. Unlike the old windlass, it doesn't feed off the back and into the chain locker. This one goes around and then down and feeds in through the hole down there. Have I got all the clearances right? Well, we're gonna find out. Few minutes later, all done. 70 meters of chain in the boat. Yes. All I have to do is get myself an anchor now. Took some time out to help one of my viewers who'd contacted me. He was looking at a boat uh, in the local area, so I went down with him to take a look. Come to look at a boat. Uh, one of my viewers is going to buy a boat, and he asked me to have a look at it. And there's a couple of friends here. Uh, you can't get around this town without running into somebody, you know. 
It was another steel boat, uh, quite a fine boat. I liked it, double-ended, uh, had been around and done quite a bit in its life and feeling. had this on board. Uh, all his winches, I'd never seen them like this, really old fashioned, I think original to the boat. Also had a wooden mast, which I thought was rather cool. Some people wouldn't want that, but uh, I like it on a boat if it's that kind of boat that you're looking for. Another thing that I wish Shaddy had is this, completely watertight uh, companionway hatches. Oh yes, <laughs> this, this is my kind of boat. I bet there's some history to this. Although a boat like that looks beautiful, the upkeep, maintenance and expense of running it would be horrendous. Another unique thing to New Zealand is boathouse living. A boathouse and a house all in one. A monumental event is about to take place. <laughs> Time to change that pesky depth sounder that doesn't work. This would actually be the second replacement unit going in the boat, which meant uh, that this is the third one the boat's had. So that's the old one out. Got the new one down here. As I think I've said before, electrics is not my strongest point. But uh, since I'd already done this job once before, back in Plymouth, I'd hoped it was going to be an easy fix. A working depth sound, a 1.4, which means we're aground. <laughs> That'll do. And an update to the big blue thing that was being constructed in the uh, marina back in the last video. And in fact, is the new... A boat hoist being put together here at Riverside Drive Marina. Uh, it's a huge thing. Uh, even the tires, there, there's something to behold. Uh, a massive creature that's going to help them uh, lift some bigger boats in the future. Well, I found the boat hoist quite impressive, even if the ducks didn't. Uh, they just carried on quacking away in the water. The sun came out. People come out and talk. That's the nice thing about marinas. You get to see your neighbours when the sun shines. Got a couple of temporary bolts in the hinges just to try it out. The forward hatch that covers the chain locker. And done the cutout. Um, that was kind of cool. Now will it fit over what I'm calling the cod piece? The moment of truth. Will it or won't it? As I said, the angle changes as it comes down. <laughs> yes! Yeah, baby! I'm pleased with that. It looks slightly odd, but it has to be that shape to get over this strangely shaped thing at the back here, the cod piece. And it's certainly not as big as I thought it would be. I thought I had to cut most of the forward uh, part of the hatch off. Anyway, what I'm going to do next is take off all this old covering, this anti-slip stuff, um, because it's past its uh, usefulness and it's um, completely not, not any good anymore. So there we go. Once again, one of my old uh, wood chisels comes in handy. That's certainly doing the job. As usual, my tools are out and I'm doing some work. But it's a great excuse to stop work to watch somebody else doing something. Uh, the guys are checking out their drogues. If you don't know what a drogue is, uh, it's a thing you dangle out from behind your boat in rough weather, basically. And uh, they're big. The so there are actually two drugs here, one the there and one Just there. Because, you know, distance doesn't matter. Yeah. So yeah, would you would you like to explain to the ladies and gentlemen what you actually use a drogue? What is a drogue for? Well, it's for it's for when you know when the going gets really rough and you know you're kind of out of options and and uh, you're in big following seas and you're in a danger of the boat surfing off the face wave, turning sideways and going like you know. Or roaching and rolling over and or pitch bowling, pitch bowling, pitch bowling down, nasty yeah. stuff. So you, you you throw this off the stern of the boat. Yeah. And so it slows the boat down. The boat continues. You, you lash the helm amidships, and the boat continues going, going along. But this slows it down and acts like a big, 
like a, it's it, it slows the boat down so when it comes off the top of a wave it slows down and eases into the trough instead of instead of taking off or broaching so basically it's something you use in really 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 nice bad weather I, I've never actually used one yeah it's, it's, I hope never to yeah but I know people that have several people lots of, actually probably probably a dozen people that have deployed them and you know they say they're like lifesavers so Ooh. how can oh, you go wrong geez. I tried to explain it but I couldn't you've done the perfect job cheers. well you, I'm only perfect because you don't know the actual truth <laughs> I, know, I know nothing <laughs> these two know everything so it's kind of like putting the boat on a big giant bungee cord okay That's um, good way of to, to slow the boat down so it won't pitch pole so it won't surf but it doesn't stop the boat dead that's the important part also as opposed to the old parachute drogue that the guy in the pea jacket and the curly pipe standing on the dock will tell you about which which was the old style and that's what everybody used the old parachute drogues or the, the cone shaped drogues you've only got one unit in the water you're relying on one thing this yeah I've got 105 cones or something like that of course none of that is any good unless you have somewhere really really strong to fix it a couple of brackets one either side silicon is wonderful stuff it has many uses and uh, the marine stuff is very expensive I'm putting back reseeing the porthole but uh, every time I tried to screw the backing plate together to mount it in the hole uh, screws broke they wouldn't go in so I got th I ended up going through di three different sets of screws I ended up breaking six of them in the thing trying to get them out there's still two stuck in there now and each time I remove the window the porthole to put it back in of course silicon gets everywhere it's on my feet it's on my clothes it's on the deck I think some of them has gone on the carpet it's like uh, if I can if you can imagine an explosion in a paint factory that's what we're talking about you know it just gets everywhere it just and then you you start to get agitated about the whole thing and you start making more mistakes anyway the short of it is I couldn't do the job and I hate jobs that fail and this is a failure I've had to take it all out again there's silicon everywhere it, it's going to get dark soon um, and it might it might rain so I've now got to reseal the hole that I've for tonight with plastic and tape and stuff like that so I'm not in the best of moods at the moment try as I might this porthole has been a bit of a so-and-so getting it back in uh, so we're gonna have another go today I'm in a good temper <laughs> everything's gone right so far so yeah, let's try this one more time I keep calling it a window but of course it's a porthole. The screws screw into this slot here and self tap into this slot uh, but I've damaged it because of the uh, screw that got stuck in here so I put a wood insert and hoping that the, the screw will go in there and the wood insert will expand and hold the screw in. <laughs> okay the moment of truth. I've got to say I'm, I'm super nervous about this because once you open this stuff as you might have seen before when it went wrong if it does go wrong it gets everywhere and it's taken me two days to clean it all up so here we go again second attempt to get this porthole back in the boat hoping this is going to be much much neater some swearing in there but I cut it out not too bad right time to screw it in oh please work I tell you one thing whatever happens this porthole is not coming out again at least not by me anyway quick porthole check on this boat there's one there and there's two yeah and there's three Oh yes! Super, super, super 
important. Uh, if you have something like a porthole or a hatch that uh, breaks away, comes off, smashes or something in bad weather, you have a hole effectively in a boat. It's, it's above the waterline. But when I've left uh, portholes open by accident and you get hit by a way, you, you can't imagine just how much water comes into a boat. So if you've got a permanent hole that's, that's happened on your boat, even though it's above the waterline, uh, it, it means you've got problems. So uh, it, it, to do that properly was what I was trying to do and I, I think that's done right now. Uh, it's very, very important. All skin fittings like that on the top side of the boat is pretty much as important as the ones on underneath the waterline. <laughs> I'm happy, yes. Making coffee this morning. Oh, you're not supposed to see that. <laughs> There's some strange sounds ashore in here in the marina. Um, sort of bass guitar and keyboards and stuff. And that's because I'm in a band. Uh, we're playing uh, three gigs over the next few days. We've been practicing for a few months. Uh, I've been so busy rehearsing, editing videos, doing the boat. I haven't been able to trim the beard for, for about a month. Um, anyway, we're doing one of the final rehearsals today before a show. Uh, it's 11 o'clock in the morning and I'm not a morning person. And uh, the uh, the band leader, Martin, is a real nice guy, but he's a, he, he, he's a, a driving personality and he's, we do as we're told, <laughs> if we know what's good for us. Anyway, we've been ordered to be there at 11 o'clock this morning. I've already set up my stuff. I'm drumming. I'm not playing any instruments because I've got too many other things to do. So I just turn up and bang my box, if you, if you know what I mean. So uh, anyway, to work. I'm supposed to be retired. I'm doing a lot more music these days, so decided to open another YouTube channel dedicated just to my music. Sea Dog Music, I'll leave a link to it below. If you want to check out some of the performances, please go over there, uh, like me and subscribe. Meanwhile, on this channel, I'd like to bring you a little bit of variety. So here are some gardening tips. We've got the local cruiser's uh, veggie patch here. And Mo's, uh, he reckons that putting cocaine on the plants actually helps them. <laughs> Those are going to be happy plants. Needless to say, that was not real cocaine. Hope you enjoyed the video. Join us next time when I play around with the toilet. Uh, some friends of mine install a barbecue on their boat. And some girls get jiggly.